Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Because you make me feel alive. I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Hey, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm your host, Wendy Cooper, and it's time to sit back, let go, and start living unfiltered. Hello. <laughs> hey, John, what's happening? Hey, Tony. Wendy. Tony's got to work on the fade out. Oh, Tony, Tony doesn't, doesn't have, have a mic. mic. Tony always needs a mic. We need oh, your input, man. Tony. You're crucial. Tony, no, the, no, now our segment <laughs> producer is trying to frantically get Tony a mic. You're blocking my it's shot, not work. segment producer. It won't work. It won't work. Wendy, won't work. Hey, how was your day? Hi. I haven't seen you since before Thanksgiving. Oh, I know. How was yeah. your... Actually, I wanted to ask you about your Thanksgiving. About I my... Heard the story. We all heard the story about you hauling the table and then this and that. And oh, hauling the table. But what about, yeah. but what about my abscess freaking toothache oh. that... Remember, oh, we were drinking that booze? Oh, that was the... Th yeah, that was the reason for the whiskey. <laughs> we were drinking <laughs> with the whiskey at the yeah. show. And I go, oh, this is great because this is here and I'm going to drink it. I found it in the kitchen because I, I said to you, I have this toothache. Right. And then that night... Oh my freaking god! I thought did I was gonna worse? die. I was crying in the bathroom at five o'clock in what the morning, did you do? begging, begging my dentist, begging somebody to help me. Please, God, help me! It was so bad. Anyway, so that was the day before Thanksgiving, and I went and did and did all of the stuff, and I got pain stuff and antibiotic, and then I had a root canal the following Monday. So but my Thanksgiving kind of sucked in that way, but. Everybody really came to the table, and my sister-in-law, Jerry, and Danny were there, and I took a few naps in between everything, but, you know... Because it's a long day if you're hosting. Well, it just worked. It's not just dinner. It, it's a It whole worked thing. out really, really, really nice. Huh? Was it too no, why would it be too hot? The segment producer just asked if it was too yeah. hot. <laughs> She's a, here's the, the weird thing about our segment, <laughs> about our segment producer. It's like, she doesn't understand she that you're not supposed to She still thinks it's July. <laughs> Uh, but she's our favorite. Funny. She's so, our favorite. So, though. Tony, happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, happy belated, Tony. Thank yeah. Happy How did you celebrate? Uh, I worked 12 hours and went home and watched 12 hours and <laughs> so went home and watched the movie. Tony is saying, if you can't hear him, that he worked 12 hours. <laughs> the world's tiny. As <laughs> no, you know, yeah. as long as you were happy and you were feeling peace, then it's all good. I was. Thank good. You. Good. Yeah. Good. I know so many people who has have birthdays in the first week of December. It's it's hard to really find the time to spend time with all of mm -hmm. them because there's so many that have birthdays. Um, well, uh, John. Yes. Dear. I can't. I can't see you at all. <laughs> Just <laughs> we, cameras. We, we happen to be sitting <laughs> so that this camera is right in front of us. I thought maybe we would periscope tonight. Should, should we periscope? Yeah, I thought that our that would be our segment producer pull up needs periscope. to per periscope the show, <laughs> and um, because I thought that that was a really smart. <laughs> as I, there you are in between the, here the, we go. the wire. I thought that was a really great idea is to periscope the show because I mean, it's a behind the scenes. Um, a view of the show. It's a cool behind the scenes view, and like they, they have this cool setting where you just look at the map and there's these red dots. So somebody in Croatia could find a, our dot in LA and start watching the show. So, so, so it's super cool. So that was actually my dad's idea. So thanks, Dad. Well, thanks, Dad. What's your dad's name? Phil. Is he cute? Yeah, he's a handsome man. No, who I'm does sure he look he like? Uh, Bo Bridges is who oh, he looks like. Oh, he does. Or so, Jeff. Sorry, sorry Mama Hamilton. I got to ask every man. <laughs> <laughs> who's handsome if their dad is handsome. Oh, that's oh, interesting. Yeah. I ran into this a man last night in Costco on, when I was buying wine. I love how your voice gets super yeah, deep. I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting my radio voice on. And anyway, and I'm looking all junkified, right? Because I never dress for anything unless I come to UBN. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in Costco, and there's this very good-looking stately kind of man you know just the kind of look i really kind of like and um and he's looking at the wine and i'm looking at the wine and i have to be really careful not to buy too many bottles of the 5.99 wine. yeah you don't want too much of that lying around <laughs> i was like would you kind of go away so i can put what i want in my cart 
<laughs> Otherwise, you're going to start throwing the $18 bottles of wine in your cart. I did. I did. And that's not really the what I wanted. The things we do. The Santa Margarita I was putting in the cart. And I was oh, putting that's it. my favorite. Santa Margarita. That's so good. It was very funny. It would be a funny comedy skit. Um, but anyway. Okay, so I'm trying to get my Periscope up okay. really quick. So let me see if I can... Uh, and then we'll work on... Here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to talk a little bit about our guest because we do have a guest. And she's awesome. Actually, I spent the evening... <laughs> it's the first oh. time I ever went to the movies with anyone... And okay. I actually sat. We're live. No. So we are live periscoping now, everybody. There we are. It's the first time I ever went to a movie with someone and I didn't sit next to them. That's awkward, right? Yeah. It's, it was. No. It but I didn't sit next to them. Uh, I will tell, we'll tell a little bit of the story. And then ever since I went to the movie with Deirdre, I thought, how rude of me to not sit next to her in the movie. But I'll tell you the story of why. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, kind of funny. Did you have the option? I think it's funny. Yeah, I had the option. Yes, I did. And that's why it was so rude of me. But anyway, um, Deirdre Wilson, she is uh, a TV radio host producer. Extraordinaire. And uh, um, I was watching some of her um, host reel which I dug up and found. <laughs> I wanted to see everything. And I was really, really, really impressed because I know Deirdre because I casted her in a couple of commercials that I produced. And uh, we became fast friends, and she comes to my 4th of July party. But Deirdre's amazing because she also had a show called Out of the Blue in on LA Talk Radio when I was there. And it, was, it focused on animals, the environment, spirituality, mm -hmm. which is... A kind of an interesting combination, right? And Deirdre basically calls it positive media for the betterment of the planet. So I want to welcome Deirdre to the show. Woo! Woo! All these people, where'd they come from? Thank we have you. a massive audience. Thank you for having massive me. Massive in studio. It's so awesome that you're here because you're such so a uh, on fire personality. Woo! You know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 she are. is. She's a firecracker. I mean, you and I don't even drink. No, I'm kidding. No, but we. <laughs> but if but I do, watch out. <laughs> you do drink. I do. I've danced on many tables and many bars. Yes, but that's why I don't drink. We oh, have. Okay. I, th okay. I, I actually think we have a picture of Deirdre. Um, uh, no, not that one. No. No, they're the ones that I, I sent. I. Oh no! I put it on Facebook of you dancing at the wedding. Oh, okay. Okay, All I right. got confused. I thought we had it for the show, but who's I put it. Wed wait, whose wedding? You went to a wedding recently. Oh, right, right. And Rihanna's were, wedding. And you were dancing. Yeah. And I put that yes, on our yes. Facebook. I'm oh. living on Filter's Facebook page because right. I that's thought it was awesome. That's the real me. Because that's my yeah. favorite. That's like my favorite thing to do in the world is dance. Yeah. That's when I feel the best. And I love the picture of your Annie Hollish kind of picture at LAX. Yes, when I went back east for my high school reunion recently. Oh, you found it? Yeah, Tony found it. Tony can find anything. That's amazing. No, he can. You, you, you are who you are <laughs> no wonder you're in charge sometimes he finds things you don't want him to find <laughs> oh okay yeah. <laughs> yeah don't find any of those you know oh. that's me. another show <laughs> so Deirdre what's new what's going on what's oh my happening God. so much well you know I started doing a lot of commercials and print work so I've been running around going on auditions in LA which is a lot of fun and I'm up in Hollywood yeah, all the time because I live down in the South Bay. So I'm driving up here all the time. And uh, I have a commercial out right now for Pooch Smooch, which is a dog tongue cleaner, which is great because I love oh. animals. And I'm the host of that. In fact, somebody did called you, did me. Did you have to clean a dog's tongue? Well, I mean, no, I had like to hold the little thing it? out. Right, so they lick it. So I actually worked with a dog. And I got a call while I was waiting in the green room before I came here from my friend in New Jersey. I just saw your Pooch Smooch commercial, you know. And uh, then I did a commercial for Sherry's Berries, which is out right now, and American Express. Where did Sherry's Berries come from? All of a sudden. I know. What is Sherry's was, Berries? There was nothing Sherry's Berries. Berries with chocolate dipped in chocolate. And then all of a sudden, all kinds it of was chocolate. emails every day from Sherry's Berries, commercials every 20 minutes. Like it was. Really? Like, what are you watching? And they didn't even give Just us TV. any. Just TV. <laughs> just any 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 channel. I any haven't seen it. I haven't oh, seen really? it. Really, no. it was just like an explosion of Sherry's berries. I felt very out of the loop, as if I had no idea right? what Sherry's berries was. And you were you were in one of the Sherry's berries commercials. Yes, I was. Are they good? You know, the only opportunity <laughs> I had to have one is my 
fake husband, my actor husband, shoved one in my mouth, like kidding mm. around. What was it like a chocolate covered strawberry oh, or God, something? It was like it was like a little obnoxious. But anyway, so that was my only taste. But I was watching these trays come by, you know, dipped in white chocolate and milk chocolate and dark chocolate. Oh my God, they looked so are they amazing. are they like sun dried? No, no, it's they fresh are fruit. Big plump. Fresh it's like edible arrangements, but a like different you would dip version. At home, you know, in chocolate. Oh, oh, yeah, like the lady that left her Godiva di- chocolate dipped strawberries the other day at Ann Taylor's, and the girl goes, <laughs> "Are these anybody's? Are these anybody's?" And I looked at the bag, and, and I you went, "You said mine." You know, yeah, really. <laughs> and then, and she you... goes, "They're only six dollars a strawberry," and I went, "You know." <laughs> but did she, you seriously say that they were yours? And you I took said, them? "Well, that's a little ridiculous." Somebody would pay six dollars for the <laughs> I would never do that. Well, I wouldn't true. do that. And whoever did deserves the, to leave them behind because they did that. <laughs> no, you're right. I just want to remind our viewers, too, that are watching on Periscope, uh, they can ask questions. So they can type us questions. So if they want to ask anything to oh, really? Wendy or I or to Deirdre, feel free to do so because we so are taking questions. I mean, I'm not even familiar with Periscope. What is it? It's a live streaming app. So right now we're live streaming. Okay. And so now people all over the world are watching. So uh, if yes. you look at if you look at our segment at the segment producer's phone, that's what people around the world are seeing if they're on Periscope and, uh-huh. and choose to see us. And they can type in us. their questions or they yeah. can just type in yeah. rude comments. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. It's it's fun. interesting. It is it's, very interesting. It's owned by Twitter. Is it owned I, by Twitter? I, you got cool. me. I have no idea. I think so. Periscope's owned by Twitter. I think. That is so cool. Yeah. It's it's like they're all here in the room with us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of it's real time. It's, but That's you know nice. what? A lot of like CEOs, like stupid egomaniacs, are using it for like, oh, I'm on a run this morning, and you know what? I, you know, <laughs> 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 like, really, dude? We don't want to see you like doing that before you get to the office, right. all cleaned up. Exactly. <laughs> or there'll be like little like college girls in their dorm, just like sitting there studying and waiting for somebody to ask them. Well, questions. you know what? It, it freaks me out a little bit because sometimes I'll go like into social media and I'll start looking at stuff and. And and it, it does freak me ab- out about how uh, risque young people really are online. I, it's a it's a little troubling. and by young it's young. young. I mean it's as young as twelve. It, it makes 13. me feel dirty. Uh huh. Well, I'm glad, I don't ha- I'm glad I don't have a daughter that I have to monitor on Facebook or anything. I don't have a daughter. No, I said, I'm glad I don't have a daughter that I have to monitor and worry about those kind yeah. of things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, you or should be glad. What are they doing? I'm Who glad are they contacting? Too. Yeah. You know? Who are I'm, they having I'm a date glad with? That, we missed, that I missed that. Like, I think I was probably the last generation probably. to really... Yeah, because that stuff didn't, didn't have that during not really during even, that age. No, I think during I, that I time. got Facebook in college. Yeah, so yeah. We yeah well, you're that. as old as Zuckerberg, right? Zuckerberg is like thirty. Do we don't talk about that. Okay. We don't talk no, about don't. billionaires that are my age. <laughs> oh, okay, Wendy. <laughs> We can't all be Mark. You know? Yeah, we can't all be Mark, Wendy. <laughs> so, did you? Um, you let, let's talk a little bit about your the radio show Out of the Blue. Okay. And the interesting combination of animals, spirituality, and the environment. Yes. Right? And how you kind of came up with that potion. Well, I started doing this actually in the early 90s on cable TV in Santa Monica. And uh, I wanted to be like a Mary Hart Entertainment Tonight because mm-hmm. I loved entertainment news. And um, I used to go to a lot of spiritual lectures with Marianne Williamson, if you've ever heard yes. of her. She's yes. got Oprah written mm-hmm. m- mucho books. Anyway, I was doing volunteer work with her for um, Project Angel Food, so that's how I got to know her. And I'd go to her lectures and say, you know, you can do your work for God and anything you do, whether a waitress or you work in an office or whatever. And I started thinking, okay, how can I bring, you know, spirituality and do good for the planet through my show? And I sat very quiet in a meditative state and I said, what are the three most important things to my heart and soul? And the answer for me was animals have always been very sensitive and uh, helpful to rescuing animals. Intuitive to animals, the, right? Yeah. You know? The uh, environment. I love this planet. I think mm. it's so beautiful, and I want to be instrumental in helping to save it, <laughs> no. which I just attended Al Gore's <laughs> Climate Reality Change in Miami recently, which was a oh, great experience. And uh, spirituality, my spirituality, being on this voyage that I have been, um, reading the incredible books I have, and opening my heart and my mind, and wanting to spread spirituality uh, throughout the planet. So I did that for many years. 
Um, and then Marianne Williamson said to me, when I started doing it, she said, I'd like to be a guest on your show. I'm going to be a guest on your show. So she came on, and we um, did a fabulous, fabulous interview, which I cherish. And uh, then I started doing it on the radio, as you know, LA Talk Radio, because I met Wendy, mm -hmm. and Wendy told me about it. And I thought, oh, how cool. You know, you can be, like, on air all around the world, and they can hear you. So I can spread, you know, more good right. further. So that's how I got involved with that. And it really is my heart and my soul and my passion, what I love to do, besides the dancing, of course. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I love doing. So hopefully I'm making a difference. Well, do you think you're making a difference? I think so. I mean, the people that listen to my show love it. I think it's... Uh, Something I've become really, really good at. I'm really good at interviewing people. Well, I should be. I've been doing it so long mm -hmm. now, you know, but I seem to ask the questions that people are thinking about in the audience, which is really cool. It's almost like an intuitive sense. Yeah. Or I'll ask a question and somebody will say, God, I was just thinking about talking about that or something. So I love connecting with people well, and I love, I love actually, radio's great too. But I love, and I love the fact that you guys, you know, all get to see people on this. But I love uh, television and being seen and sure. connecting with well, people. Well, this is the perfect, this is actually the perfect combination because, you know, uh, UBN right. is really radio TV, right? Yes, and, and, which is and, really cool. And um, in the world of mm -hmm. podcasting, you know, because my core faculties are basically marketing and in the world of Radio, you know, podcasting was over here, and now podcasting is up here. Yeah, podcasting right. is a very big thing, very accepted. When when I love the commercial, I think I said this last time. I'm not sure, but the, there's a commercial where I don't know who it's for. Maybe it's Microsoft. Maybe it's Apple. Maybe it's I don't know. Right. I don't know. But it's a it it's about. You never know who, what people are listening to. And so you see a girl running down the street, <laughs> and you think she's listening to music, but it, it kind of shows this bubble where she's listening to some An audio it, tape or something. A speech right. of, about something or that's a movie. really, uh, you, never know. Yeah. you know, an in-depth subject, you know, because so many people um, use and download podcasts because we always have earbuds in our ears, and mm -hmm. we have so much time, the opportunity to listen to audio formats that they've just become very big it's very big at at this point well that's know? good yeah. news mm -hmm. for all yeah, of much us, bigger right? than it was a few years ago right. when when that's all that we were doing right you know yeah you know and now so. with the video component you also have the ability to take the video and put it on youtube create your youtube channel and become your own personality on youtube which is nice right, and have because control over all of that yeah right. and i'm personally a very visual person so I love seeing and not just hearing. I mean, it's great to hear and use your imagination and what people look like and everything, but I'm very visual and I really love seeing people. And when I'm doing interviews, I like having them next to me. Like I did a lot of shows that were all over the country and I yes, did them by phone. You did, I know. And I never met the person mm. and I so missed that meeting them and mm -hmm. bonding with them. Like Tippi yeah. Hedren was one of the guests that yeah. was on my show and I really clicked with her and bonded with her and and i don't think that i would have clicked and bonded with her had i not yeah. been able to meet her Be in face person. to face it yeah. sounds like you've been able to really carve a, a path a fulfillment for yourself which i think for a lot of people you know we, f we find ourselves in jobs or careers that we know we're paying our bills we're doing what we think we should do but it's not necessarily you know fulfilling so how Absolutely. were you able to carve that path and to do what you want mm -hmm. And to be able to be fulfilled in what you know you you need to do to that's serve a, the that's planet, a good one. so to speak. Well, I mean, I, I'm one of those people. A lot of people aren't, and that's okay. Everybody learns when they're supposed to or figures things out sure. when they're supposed to. But I'm one of those people that I knew when I was five years old what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be in the entertainment field. And I started in this business as a model in New York and in New Jersey. Started doing the weather on cable TV in mm -hmm. New Jersey. And then I moved out here. So I've always known that I want to be in the entertainment field. And it's not always easy to make a living doing this stuff. But, Gosh, but no. you know, I'm, I'm 58 years old and I'm still doing it. You know what I mean? It's not like, ah, I did it for a few years and I crapped out and said, no, you, you know it, what? It's a career choice when for you. you. When you have a, a pull in your heart like that, it's like, I'm going to be friggin' 80 years old and I'll be doing this. 
Why? Because it is my my heart and my soul. And your passion. And I love it. And passion and passion right. is everything. I mean, you guys know that. But some people, you know, don't figure out what they want to do to like midlife and they make a big it's shift, so sad. shift or change. Well, it I don't sucks. think I don't are you saying I'm sad. No, I just think I think there's so many of us that I just go with this grind of career, you know, graduate college, get a job and then just do it. And then we're not fulfilled. We think being fulfilled maybe is having a career and making money. But it's not really filling our hearts. I know what you're saying. But you know what? I don't think it matters when it happens. I think it matters, and this goes back to my spirituality, it it matters that it happens. It doesn't matter if it happens at the beginning or the end. If I had my way, I would have been rich and famous at 22. Well, I might have been really messed up, too, if, if, right. that, if that happened to me. You could have been a total bitch. And I totally <laughs> realize it. And the other thing Who is... she's not? I, <laughs> I have, I think, um, I've stayed really down to earth, and I have a great compassion for people and for struggle and people trying to, you know, make a living and so forth, you know, mm -hmm. because I had to, you know, if things came really easy when, you know, you don't appreciate those things and you don't have that, you know, emotional musculature that you have that compassion for people. So I think that what you go through just makes you more colorful of course, and easy to relate to. And it, and it humanizes you, and it gives you the experience Absolutely. to understand other humans' yeah. experiences. Yeah, so I, you know, it, it was worth the pain. <laughs> Good. Well, okay. well, while we're talking about human experiences, mm. I think that's a perfect segue to our oh. sponsor, <laughs> <laughs> Easy Go Pro. You're and, so uh, clever, Wendy. And we will be back after a word from our sponsors. In an average lifetime, 1,500,000 minutes are spent on the toilet. So what's the problem? When you sit on a toilet, you're at a 90 degree angle. Nature didn't want us to do it that way. This causes pushing, straining, hemorrhoids. That's crazy. We want to create a product that is great for humanity. Well, go time just got easier. Introducing Easy Go Pro, the only way to go. Anatomically, we were designed to eliminate at a 35 degree angle. You just sit, lift, and go in a natural position. The benefits list is this long from a pure health perspective. A healthy colon is encouraged by doctors for all ages. The key to vitality is the key to longevity. It's the key to your health. Be a healthy goer. Order now at easygopro.com. Try it for 70 days. If you don't absolutely feel better, just send it back for a full product refund. Go time just got healthier at easygopro.com. Hey everybody, we're back, and you know what? I think that everyone just uh, is seeing it in a video format anyway. Just saw the selfie station commercial, and um, I have to tell you something, John. Yeah. <laughs> I told you about this last week, right? Yeah, no, we're two weeks ago, and we're jazzed about uh, it. Two weeks ago, yeah. Deirdre, this is this is really something. So there's this thing called selfie station, right? And it's uh, selfiestation.com. And it's a it's a it's your own your own business. Oh my God, you would oh, you're in California, mm -hmm. you can't do it. But you would be great at this because you're so outgoing. It is like a big giant iPhone. It's like a photo booth. It looks like an iPhone. You own your own business. You have this thing that you go around to parties and you make tons of money oh just God. by having fun with a selfie station business. But it's not in California. Well. They say that the territory of California is taken because it's such a hot hotbed for people who want to take selfies. Interesting. <laughs> but you know, it's really awesome because it all it it's it's just like the old time photo booth, only modernized, right? Right. But you can put your your photos immediately onto email, onto Twitter, onto Facebook. Um, wow. And it's this awesome business that is it really just, is. you know, too much fun, right? It was bound to happen. It's like one of those things I'm like, gosh darn it, why didn't I think of that? You well, everybody's I mean? taking selfie, selfies at, at parties. Oh, God, yes. right? Imagine if you can just have this really cool, and it's your business. So and you own it. It's and they're probably business. good quality photos. They're awesome quality photos. You Very know? neat. So it's at, um, if I was an uh, if I was going to buy a business and you go into business, oh, in a New York second. Now, are you kidding? You might even move to Arizona to do it. I would. <laughs> you I just contract I someone out in it. Arizona to do it yes, for you. Exactly. Can you think about having one in, in uh, Las Vegas? I mean, there's there's plenty of room in Las Vegas for four or five different selfie station owners. All the conventions going on there. Exactly. Exactly. So anyway, if anybody's interested, you can save $500, I believe, if you go to selfiestation.com. You put in the promo code, I believe it's unfilter me. 
So that's unfilter me, and you say five hundred dollars, and I'm telling you, it's super affordable. It's super fun. It's the way to finally get out of the nine to five grind and yeah. to have a really good time doing it. So that's selfiestation.com and promo code unfilter me. Yeah, and if you have bucks. a business, you can brand the selfie stations right. to your business too, so you can take them to the different events with your branding on it. So it's really it's a wow. great idea. I was just corrected, and this is live television, so it, it oh, <laughs> it's, yes, it's actually selfiestationpodcast.com. With promo code unfiltered me to save five hundred dollars. Yeah, save five hundred dollars, people. Come on. And watch out because John and I are gonna start buying these things. <laughs> we <up>. are. We're <laughs> gonna take over the Arizona market and yeah, we'll, we'll get this out of the Mississippi. Nevada, maybe yeah. maybe get into Mexico. <laughs> maybe. I, I'm telling you. Yeah. So so Deirdre, you are on a quest to write a a memoir? Yes. Yes, I am. And the funny thing is What does I, a quest to write a memoir mean? Well, a I mission. suppose a mission, a, okay. a, a quest. Yeah. Embarking upon. I would, I embarking would, upon. I okay. would say, yeah. yeah. Um, the funny thing is that I've known that I'm going <laughs> to write. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I just wanted to know what quest like, meant. You don't know what the hell a quest meant? If she's like, like Don are you like traveling the world to complete this? <laughs> or are you just like embarking upon um, writing a memoir? You, you, Checking the definition, he, he, I think. But he goes so much further what into things. It's mean? like, I'm so surface and you're so deep. That's, well, that's, that's, I guess, a good, that's why a we good balance. combo. Yeah. That's why we balance. Yeah, exactly. Um, the interesting it's thing about this is I knew that I was going to write this book 30 years ago. And I don't know how I knew. I mean, what do I know about life, you know, 30 years ago? But you had an and, ambition to and, know. Well, uh, but about I, life. you know how you have a certain knowingness, it's your intuitive self once again. But I knew that I was going to write this book, um, I had the title in my mind. And, um, you know, just living my life and more stuff is happening and more stuff is happening. And I'm just like adding, 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 you know, to my book. And I'm like really glad that I haven't written it before now because some more really cool things. Well, I'm sure have a bunch happened. more yeah, cool so, things. This is crazy. And I mean, and will happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I'm here for the long haul. But my, I think my reason for, it feels like a calling, like doing my show, reason for uh, writing my book, I believe is that the, some of the experiences I've gone through in life, I feel um, talking about them, and I'm, and I'm a good writer, if I mm -hmm. may say that myself. I'm really you good may. at expressing you may. myself. You may. Is you um, may I think or you can? Is it, it's you may? I think you, it's may. you may. you may. And, uh, <laughs> and I think that I can help people. I think I can help people with things that I have gone through and struggled with. Um, there's lots of other people out there that have you know, have I think had those I think we can all uh, our own, and they're unique, but yet they're similar. You know right. what I mean? And I have been an archaeologist. Oh Jesus! I've been I have <laughs> wow. been I have been working on myself, analyzing myself, working on myself, heal myself since I was twenty. So I'm fifty eight now. That's a long friggin' time, and I'm really good at analyzing myself and other people. I'm like a, a natural what psychologist. Sign are, what sign are you? I'm uh, Capricorn on the cusp oh. of Aquarius, January twentieth. So anyway, I'm very excited about this book. I've started it. Um, I don't know exactly when I'll finish it. Are you self publishing it or are you writing it? I'm not even it? sure about that. I have like Balboa Press or something calling me all the time. Mm. Um, you know, maybe on Hay House. I'm not sure. Oh. I'm not sure if I'm going to. Hay uh, House could be cool. She's yeah, it would be. You know, I love Louise Hay. Yeah. Love. She's one of my yeah. spiritual teachers yeah. from way back. And I used yeah. to go to her um, support groups yeah. in West I Hollywood. I just watch her on YouTube. Yeah, she had a support group for people with AIDS. Just watch her on YouTube. She started in her living room in Pacific Palisades years ago, like in the 80s. And she's, it got so big that she had to do it in West Hollywood. Wow. And I used to go there and make the announcements for Project Angel Food, which oh, I was really? doing for Marianne Williamson. And so I would stay there for the whole two hours because I was like in the presence of greatness, Louise Hay, you know, and I was and learning she didn't so much. Become very, she didn't become like that great soul until later in her life. She wasn't always, in her, when she was young, she, from what she, I... Yeah, she I'm, had to go through what she had to go through, mm -hmm. but... You know, I think she was around uh, in her she's 50s. She's such a gracious, when, beautiful when I woman. Met, when I met her, she was in her 50s, and now she's like in her 80s. Yeah. But, uh, 
Oh my, she just made a oh, huge all these impact. Things I never knew about you. Yeah, now. she's made a huge impact on my life. I love her uh, book, You Can Heal Your Life. And in the back, it has a glossary for every ailment from a headache to cancer. What is going on with you? What is your negative thought? And what is the positive thought to heal you? Which is hmm. amazing. And I think she just celebrated her birthday. I saw her on Facebook. So she's still working and going to seminars. And oh my God, she's amazing. So she I is love amazing. Her. I was just introduced to her actually this year because I'm such a loser. You but are not. <laughs> you know, um, but I thought that she was just a remarkable human being. Yeah. You know, you know when you've read those books that like made a huge impact on your life yeah. and you never forget them. Yeah. Well, that's how I feel about reading her book 30 years ago. I was mm. I was telling my son Chance uh, the other day. I said, you know, you really have to believe in manifesting, and that, you know, you ask the universe for something and it's going to give it to you, but you have to make sure to ask for it and give it deadlines and things like that. That I learned from Pamela Grout, who wrote E Squared, mm -hmm. and um, and then I I said, for instance, Chance. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not really funny. It's just kind of funny that I didn't realize this happened that, <clears throat> you know, the house that I lived in. Yeah. I used to live in. Right. Um, I w wanted so desperately to move from that house that I, I had asked the universe, please, universe, get the landlord to tell us we have to move. Right. Mm -hmm. And I did that about nine months ago. Right. It's like the only way I'm ever going to be able to leave this place is if the landlord makes us leave. So please, <laughs> universe, tell the landlord. to make. And, and, and then I, over the course of time, I said, you know, I'd be real, I would really love to have a big yard and a garden. All I really want. I'm talking to the air. Yeah. All I really want is a house that I can entertain in, you know, and have friends of course. over. A big kitchen but to I, cook. What do I get? You know, by August. I have a 10,000 square foot lot home where people can come over. I'm kind of proud of it. It's really nice. And I've seen it. It is a big you yard. Know, it's a huge yard. Yeah. We can have it's beautiful. It's, <laughs> a, ma it's a great house. Yeah. It's a great, fun little house with a huge yard. That's right? amazing. Yeah. And so I got it. But then I said to Chance, I said, Chance, I asked the universe yeah. for all those things. You did. And you got and it. And I got that. Yeah. It's, you're not talking to the air. No. The universe hears everything. And if you can even, if you can make yourself feel what it would be like to be in that house or win that money or be with that perfect person, that helps you to achieve it yes. faster yeah. also if you could actually and get into yeah. the right. feeling part of it. Yeah. Which sure. Is cool. yeah. And I think that there's a lot of, so, uh, I mean, we all remember The Secret, right? When oh, that yeah. came out. And that was, was a very cool. really, really cool idea that a, a lot of people understood. A lot of people misunderstood and thought, okay, if I just say, I want a big house, make my vision board, it's going to yeah, come true. Yeah, the vision board, yeah. But I think what we're saying here is that if you not you not only say it and you put it out there, but you have to feel it and really like live what you want your future to be like in order to manifest something, I have right? To it's not it's not easy. It's it's con you know it's thoughtful, conscious work to be able to Pamela, achieve what Pamela you want. Pamela Grout's book E Squared teaches you how to do it, and she gives you these ten fundamental things to do but she gives you one at a time and she gives you a time frame and she tells you exactly what to ask the universe and how to be in tune with it so that you recognize that you are manifesting it it was her book pamela grout's book that totally completely changed the way i feel about yeah. about the air that i breathe and the universe around me and she's so the way that I, I listen to her audiobook, I can listen to it a hundred times mm. because she's so engaging. She's funny. But at the same time, when you do what she tells you to do, you just go, holy shit. I cannot believe that just happened. You know, the book that uh, did it for me, I actually was taking a TV commercial course in New York City. And the teacher made us read a book called Secret of the Ages by Robert Collier. And it's all the same spiritual truths of manifesting. And they called it in that book a treasure map. And this is when I was in my early 20s. And man, I started doing some of the stuff. And it was almost, <laughs> it was almost like magic. I, I wanted to go out with Prince Albert and I put his picture on my <laughs> treasure map. No, listen. And I went dancing at a club in New York called Club A uh -huh. on the upper, upper East Side on like 62nd and 1st. And I'm dancing with this guy. And this guy comes up and he puts his face right in front of mine. He goes, you're beautiful and walks away. And I'm like, 
Holy, Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> I think that was just Prince Albert that came up to me. And I said, I'm not letting him get out of this club until I find yeah, out. Yeah, no way. So I went up to him and I said, you know, you look really familiar. Do I know you from someplace? And he goes, well, my name is Albert Grimaldi. And I'm like, holy <gasps> shit. You're like, you're on my vision board. I ended up going out <laughs> on two dates with this guy. But how's, you know, how's a girl from Jersey? No, that's from wild. The suburbs you of went Jersey? out that's wild. with Prince Albert? Oh, yeah, I dated, I dated him. I went out on two dates with him. I actually walked out on him on our second date. Why? Because, Can we ask why? Because he bought um, he bought other women along, and he told me that was European custom, and I got really pissed off. And I that we, is not European. We went to uh, Studio no. F- Studio Fifty Four. No. We went to Xenon, and when we were at Xenon, I said, "Albert, I want to talk to you." And I pulled him off the dance floor, and I said, "You bring other women here tonight on this date?" And he goes, "Well, yes, it's European custom." And I said, well, guess what? We're in America, and I'm old-fashioned, and I want to go home. So he gave me my cab fare, and I went home. Oh, my God. And you knew what he was Prince story. Albert. That's crazy. And the whole Monaco soccer team was with us. So I could have, like, had a <laughs> Oh, God. And, uh, and my, my brother. There's a whole meat market my, you had My there. brother's like, are you crazy, Deirdre? Like, the whole Monaco soccer team was there, all these gorgeous guys, and you go home. I said, well, it was a, ma- you know, it was a, it was matter, a matter of principle. principle. You know, I have morals and values and integrity. Jesus. You know? So was Studio Sorry, 54 like your stomping ground? Oh, yeah. I'm I sure danced we have, on we those speakers. We could do speakers. a whole show about that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Cocaine and discos. Cocaine and disco. That sounds amazing. I never went to Studio Amazing. I would I love to I didn't, hear the I wasn't stories. in New York, so I didn't go there. I went to like the you monkey visit? club here, <laughs> whatever it was oh, called. The mon- yeah, no, brass, no, brass Studio 54, no. I was never in New York during that time. No. That was how old would we have been? We, how old were we? I was in my 20s. Yeah. No, I was having babies and getting beat. Yeah. And I, <laughs> and I was just living a very elongated uh, childhood. I never grew you up. You were exploring. Oh, my God. I mean, I was still going to the discos, you know, until I was 30 and moved out here. And I was still going to clubs. But, you know. Did uh, Prince Albert have a Prince Albert? Did he have a prince? Uh, Did he have a baby? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, he just no, got... Wait, wait, no. wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? We, we, we had a question from our one of our viewers, and they asked, did Prince Albert have a Prince Albert? He had a baby. <clears throat> Wendy, what's a Prince Albert? I think it must be some gay term for some kind it's of man. It's not a gay term. <laughs> for some I've kind heard of man. Prince Albert in the can. Okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it that way either. That was another <laughs> question. It's a piercing. Oh, it's a, a bodily Albert piercing. It's a piercing. Below the what waist do I piercing. That? I'm uh, not. I'm not on that the penis? hip. I'm not so you didn't get hip. that far with Prince Albert to know if he had a Prince Albert on his little Prince Albert. Why is it called? Why <laughs> is You're it? asking me how far I went with him on our date, aren't you? Yes. Well, I'm beating around the bush, but uh, I suppose so. Li- literally, I suppose so. No, but to be honest, I just we made out in uh, his bedroom. He had all pictures of his mother, Grace Kelly, on the on the dresser from her cap and gown in in school. Wow. To her, you know, and she had died six months before I met him. And um, he had just gotten back from the Grand Prix, I remember, in um, Monaco. No, I've been to that. And uh, I just, I made out with him. I wanted to become a princess, and I figured if I, if well, I sleep course. with him, I'm not going to be able to become a princess. Little do I know. I'm like so naive. But if you walk out on him, Wait, maybe he'll I have think. A, I have a bigger question. I have a bigger okay, question. Okay, what's your bigger question? My bigger, is that Prince Albert? Oh, he's handsome. He was oh. very cute. He was oh. very cute. Yeah. Oh he looks God. like a... Uh, yeah, that was probably right around yeah. 73, maybe? Was it 73? It was 74? around 83. Oh, 83. It was around 83. <laughs> Sorry. So he looked a little older than that. His hair's thinned out a little bit since then. John? Yes, dear. Why do they call it a Prince Albert? I, I don't know. I was actually going to ask that, and I figured that's something that we would have to Google, because <laughs> none of us will know. <laughs> That's or ask Tony is what our segment <laughs> producer is saying. That's interesting. I never, I never heard that before. I don't know why he probably he must have. I one. thought you were asking me if he had a baby because he did get married recently. He yeah, held wasn't out he a long time. Just married, like in yeah. The past and then he, weeks or um, he, he had an affair with an African American woman and had a child with her, which nobody really talks about too much. And uh, <gasps> so I don't know who <gasps> the, I don't know who the heir the apparent scandal. is. Right. The scandal. So. You don't hear much about them anymore, you know. No. When I, no. I lived in Europe, I lived in France, you know, Stephanie and whatever, Caroline, the other Caroline mm. they were all the big rage yes. and all that stuff. And you don't even hear about the Grimaldis anymore. But it's really kind of my, that's one of my favorite places. Like, I hate Monte Carlo, but I love Monaco. 
Right. If you go to the south of France right. and, and you're in that area, you know, Monte Carlo is so 60s and so... In the de it's just a little too, like, so like, riche. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of new You know, it's like, may I have on. a Coke? Uh, give me your firstborn, I give you a Coke. Yeah. You know? it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? You know, but the Mon- when on the Monaco side, it's always, it's just so gracious and yeah. so beautiful and it really nice. It looks beautiful in the pictures. Mm-hmm. I haven't been there. But yeah. I remember saying to him... Don't you love New York? Because I was so in love with New York City, of right? Of course. And I was living, breathing, eating New York City. And I said, don't you just love New York City? Don't you want to, you know, move here? He's working at an advertising agency to f- feel what it was like to, you know, be, be a, a civilian. Person. A civilian, you know? <laughs> and he's like, no, are you kidding? He goes, I... Monaco is so beautiful compared to New York City, you know. And I it like, is. I had like it not well, it's clue. apples and oranges. I mean, well, it's completely yes. different. Yeah. It's I mean, like, if you maybe wanted to compare Connecticut with Monaco, you couldn't even do that. <laughs> no, it's like <laughs> no, Palm Beach know. or something in Monaco. I, I don't know. Can you? No, can, you like can't. How about Barbara? Malibu? Malibu. No, could it's you? like Santa Barbara. So the closest thing for me for Monaco maybe would be Pal- um, Palos so. Verdes. Big Sur, okay. um, uh, Santa Barbara, yeah. but yeah. Monaco is a little bit different. But right. you know, kind of a mix of that that kind of old Spanish charm mm. in a way, right? Mm-hmm. And and none of the, the the problem with France is that like I lived in Paris and I lived in the outskirts. I lived in the suburbs of Paris, and a lot of it was built in the '60s, like Saint Denis, where you saw the thing happen at Saint Denis. That was the typical suburb of you know. Um, in Paris, the suburbs are like that. They look like that. They look like there's these stupid housing that was built in the <laughs> 60s that's just freaking ugly, and nobody wants to live there but those people. People. Um, so, you know, Monaco is the same thing. It's like Monaco is beautiful, but Monte Carlo was built in the in the like the s- the days of Frank Sinatra, right? Right, and it has that look to it, and it was just not French at all. Well, it's, it's, you know, not. it's it's not. A, it's its own. Uh, it's that. It's that country or something, isn't it? What is that? Its own little sovereign province, state. sovereign state. Yeah. You well, know what, no, it's you know everywhere. what reminds me of it though. Here, just from photos, haven't been there. But when I go down to Terranea Resort, yeah, I was going to say Palos Ter- Verdes, Ter- Terranea, and you is that how sit you say out it? Terranea. I, I say Terrania. When you sit outside <laughs> at night and have and dine, yeah, it's dine it's there, one of my and favorite you look places at the too. Mountains oh, with all the lights on it, and the cliffs. It looks it looks like photos that I've seen of Monaco. So I kind of pretend. Mon- I'm there. Of, of Monaco, it is. It is. There's this hotel in Monaco that is so awesome to go to. It's like just the beautiful. James Bond one. No, Do it's no? all white. It's like a Ian Schrader hotel, but it's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. And then you go to the Monte Carlo, and it's like the French. Right. Oh, I would want to go there from the, the sounds of the it. De, 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 de. it. Sounds like Vegas. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. It's like it oh, is. Let's not start talking about Vegas. It's, it's a Monte Carlo. Well, Deirdre, what are you so what what are you working on now? What's going on? What's your day to day? I'm Besides you know what? Book? Going I'm going on a lot of auditions. Okay. You know, for the print modeling She's growing and her hair out. growing you know, it's funny. My <laughs> agent said to me, my agent said to me, she goes, What do you think about growing your white hair in? You know, and my hair's not gray, it's white. Like my dad was like Cary Grant, yeah. you know, and my brother. I and, love uh, that. Color. So I said, I you know that. what? If it's going to make me money, I'm going to do it. And I can't believe it because I was at the hairdresser every three weeks getting my roots done. And my biggest fear, I said to my hairdresser, if I don't show up, I'm dead because <laughs> I would not miss a hair appointment for anything, you know? And so doing this is like a big deal for me to grow out my white. But you know what? I think it's going to be really It's, it's going to really look gorgeous. Beautiful. It's going to look really yeah. pretty. So I hope I make a lot of money so I can work on my projects yeah. and do the things I want and do do my show and write my book and all that Spread good stuff. Spread your word and do the outreach. And, yes, you know. and keep visualizing. Yes, exactly. Looking at my treasure, I have my treasure map framed. Very smart thing to do. I kept get it, making it on a you know poster board, get all crinkly your and all this crap. Board. Your treasure so map is my, your vision right. board. Your so vision now board starts getting bent. I made my, I took, been made my vision board in a frame, a nice frame, went to Aaron, Aaron Brothers, got a pretty frame behind glass, and now it's just like, and I picked these gorgeous pictures, you know, in blues and greens, my favorite colors, and it's there like, you know, a piece of art in so my bedroom. So it makes bedroom. you happy just to look at yes, it. Yes, and I, I wake think up. That, that is an important right? point That's to understand. Yeah. Right, and I look, I look at it every day, and it's got out of the blue my show, it's got my book, it's got my animals, and... Love, romance, and all that good stuff. And so besides the specific images and whatever that you're trying to yeah. amass, 
just itself as a whole makes you feel happy. And oh is my God, these absolutely. And I think that's really important. I think every day absolutely. for us to draw good to us, we have to stay in that feeling of feeling good. Yes, but so that's you, very difficult. To, it is, to but do. the thing that'll make you do it is realizing that when you think that way, that's what you're going to gravitate to. That's yeah, what the magnet is going to pull in. You have to keep reminding yourself of that. I keep, absolutely. I try to do like when I go to bed at night, that's I, a good I, time. I just I just put like headphones in my ears and say, okay, shut the freaking world out. Right. And you know, and I just you know, there's some great affirmations that are on YouTube that you can listen to and blah blah blah. And then I find myself listening to them for hours and and I'll like take. Then when they stop, <laughs> I'm like, it's like God, the world is back. <laughs> <laughs> the voices. <laughs> well, Wendy, you you said something a, a while a while ago, maybe six or eight months ago, and you said. I mean, maybe it was even a year ago. I wake up every morning saying, you know, something to the effect of bring it on. Who knows what today yes, is going to bring, but I, I'm looking forward to I the challenges to. and to the yes. gifts that today will bring. I do that every morning, though, Wendy, Good because, because of you, because you said that. And there were so many mornings I was waking up going, oh, God, I got to drudge through this day again. But, I, you know, I heard that. Either from you or through well, it's the only, your it's, knees. It's the only thing that and it we works. have. It helps yes. me. It's the only thing that we have to hold on to. And, oh, oh. So talking about yes. holding on to things, let's talk a little bit. This about is this so cool. Incredible this is so wild. miracle. How much time do we have? I'll we have plenty of time. Okay. All right. Well, but really, uh, Tony, you have to hold it up so that people will be able to see it. A miracle happened to me. I had a very sick cat hold named, it up. named oh. Bella that I rescued, and she had a liver disorder. And she only lived six months. And about a week or two before she died, I went into the bathroom, and in her cat pan was this perfectly shaped broken heart. Okay? Blows me away. And, I mean, I framed the picture. I can't even believe, you know, that this happened. And then I said, I asked Bella when I put her to sleep when she was sick, I said, Bella, please come back to me in a healthy body. And damned if, wow. like, four months later, I talked to this woman who's been on my show. She's an animal communicator, Marty Meyer. She's brilliant. She's been on Discovery Channel. And I said, where should I look for her? And she said, you know, you will not find her in the shelters because she knows you're too sensitive to go to the shelters and it'll make you so sad, which is the truth mm. about me. She said, try the rescue groups like Petco and so forth. So I went on one of the rescue groups, Petco. And I'm looking at all these photos, and this one just leaps out at me. Like, I could feel it in my chest. So I send seven pictures to Marty, the animal communicator. And she picked out the same one. I didn't say anything to her. I didn't put names. They weren't even from the same rescue group. And she picked out the same cat, okay? So I say, okay, I think this is her. She goes, yeah, I think this is, this is her, too. And this was, um, she was born, uh, she died the end of uh, December. She was born um, in April, okay? So I got her home, and I don't know if you have the other picture, Tony, but I got, you didn't? I got her home, I'll put my glasses on and see if I can get it up. I got her home, and I didn't realize it till after I brought her home that she has the same broken heart on her back that my Bella left in the cat, oh my God. cat pan. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It's so wild. That is just. This is the, I mean. Let me see, let me see. I have to be able to see. Well, show the camera. There you go. She's showing. There you go, stop. Perfect. Okay, so th this is, if you remember, okay, okay, the on. broken heart. This is the kitten, and you know what I called her? Same markings. I That's... named her Heaven. This is going to be a whole chapter in my book because the story is so much more involved than I'm quickly telling you. But I witnessed... So how, when did this cat come in to your she life? She came in. She came to me a year ago this past June. Hmm. I adopted her. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and I, I, if, if it didn't happen to me, I don't know if I'd believe it. But it happened to me, I mean... You know, You're right, because I don't believe it. Can I tell you? I don't you? either. <laughs> really? No, Photoshop. <laughs> I'm kidding, Deirdre. But of I course mean, I believe it. I'm like, how do you dispute that picture? But in my heart, I also know. And I had her, I said to the animal communicator, should I call her Bella, the same name? She goes, no, no, she doesn't want to be associated with this lifetime because she was very sick. And uh, I said, well, that's okay. I'll, may, I'll name her something new. And, and immediately I knew her name was supposed to be Heaven because she was coming back to mm. me from Heaven. So now that she's a big cat, 
her broken heart is probably like this big. Oh, oh my God. God. But I mean, I just love this story because I feel like a miracle happened to me and I have to share this. And Drew Barrymore, you know, wrote a book, See It and Everything, about hearts that you just see in nature and so forth. And I'm like, Drew Barrymore, you've got to see my heart. You've got to see my broken heart that my cat yeah, left in the cat amazing. bed. It's like that's tripping. That's amazing. But I'll, yeah, have, that I'll have those pictures in my book along with a detailed story. So if anybody needs to get a hold of you or wants to get a hold of you, how do they do that? Well, they can get a hold of me either by Facebook. Uh, I'm at Out of the Blue Talk Radio Show. Um, my name on Facebook is Deirdre Wilson. And um, how do you spell that for our viewers? D E I. Yeah, but for, no, for the audio, most people listen to it in an audio format. Should I give out my phone D -E -I -R -D -R -E. number? D E I R D R E. No, I should. But D E I R D R E. Um, Wilson. Wilson. W I L S O N. And. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I'd love to hear do you have feedback. an email address that people can contact you? Yes, with? it's Deirdre, D E I R D R E. Wilson. TV1, no oh, surprise TV there, one. at Verizon.net. TV1, and it's a number one. Yes. Not the O. -N. Oh, exactly. Thank you for clarifying that. That's Wendy. what I'm. You know, that's and thank you. And thank you. Thank, yeah. you. thank yeah. you for letting yeah. me share my story about heaven because that is like that's killer awesome. to me. I that's just awesome. I'm so amazed by. Well, that. we're all animal people here, so we so, love hearing those stories. Yeah. So so let's. Uh, we are going to have to wrap it up I, again already. Yeah. Um, but first, <laughs> first, first, well, let's give an update to our listeners. Okay. Okay. We are. This is our last show and our only show in. December. So happy Hanukkah. Because we don't got time, people. There's a lot going on. <laughs> this is so happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah and holidays. 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 <laughs> so happy holidays <laughs> to all and happy new year to everyone. Um, yes, and when we get back, we want to hear about all of your New Year's stories, craziness. Because we're sure you're going to hear about ours. Because you will hear about ours. John yes. and I will be coming back with Living Unfiltered with Wendy and John, and we'll have we're, we're going to work on a few things. We have to commit ourselves to working on new graphics and things like that. Kind of a new, and we're going to focus a little bit more on you know PR and marketing, and mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and have some awesome guests on. We're excited about already the guests that are interested in being on the show. Yeah, uh, lots of very interesting guests wanting to be on the show. And um, any listeners, you know, that we want to help, we're going to try to integrate in uh, yep. messaging somehow so that we can communicate during the show. Yep. What, what, do you, what segment? Segment, segment what are you saying? <laughs> Tony, that's Tony's no, Tony, job. Tony's good with the clock because we started late. Um, we started at 8.06. Dear Joe. Thank you so much. And thank you for inviting me to see Mother Teresa or The Letters the other night. It was an awesome movie. Oh, you're welcome. Oh. Thank you for having me on. And it was so great meeting you, John. Yeah, it was a pleasure to meet producer. you. She's been wonderful. She's Par really Par on top what of it. What would we do without her periscope? <laughs> and Tony, it's so great to see you again. You're, you know, you are as sweet as your last name. I was thinking that on the way here. I'm like, he is. He's he really is. sweet. Yeah. So he, it's, it's great that your name is Tony Sweet. It's yeah. perfect. <laughs> Apropos. Yeah. yeah, it's annoying. Well, uh, Deirdre, anyway. thank you for bringing your love and your light and your oh, positive thank energy you. Thank into you the for studio having me and it's been really nice me. speaking with you yeah and um i guess we are going to bid everybody a good night a good year a good year <laughs> a great year an amazing year yeah and an ass kicking year yeah. yeah and peaceful calm holidays yeah. you yeah. know try to do a little volunteer work if you can it's if not you can. all about Come to my house, volunteer, <laughs> picking up the <laughs> peanuts from the squirrels. Yeah. But, uh, um, but anyway, I think that that, uh, that sums it up for 2015 here with Living Unfiltered. And we'll, wow. be, we'll be back next year. Milestone, everybody. Right. Deirdre, thank you for being here. Thank you. Really Happy nice. New Year, everyone. Good to see you. You too. Right. Good night, everyone. Good we'll night. See you soon. Well, it's time to wrap up another great hour of Living Unfiltered here at UBNRadio.com. We'd love to hear from you. So if you have a topic you'd like us to discuss or you want to be a guest on our show, you can reach us at livingunfiltered at gmail.com. And since we're right here in the heart of Hollywood at Sunset Gower Studios, that's like saying, have your people call my people. <laughs> <laughs>